legs is slightly bent. Just climbing up to survey the damage. It looks like somebody sat right there. So it's, I don't know if you can see that, but it's dented in right there. It looks like they tried to grab this to pull themselves up and it's cracked there at, at those rivets. I see a handprint and a something. It looks like they put their hand right in the middle there and sunk, caved the uh, top of the fan in. So right here, you notice the dip and there's like sandy, there's like a sandy handprint right there. There were no dents in this van when uh, I built it out, so. That's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Welcome back party people. You know, I put this prime design ladder on the van when I first purchased the van, probably within weeks, uh, in order to gain access to the top so I could put the solar panels on, I could put the max air fan on, and just have general access to the top of the van. We're at a fireworks show at one of the beaches here, and uh, I walked back to the van and I immediately saw some sand down here on the, on the ladder steps, and uh, I see dirt up there as well. And if you look at the ladder, it is crooked. You can see that the top is further out and the bottom is further in this way. And you can see where the old, uh, you can see the dirt marks there where the old, what the pads used to be right here. So it's over to the right at the bottom of about two inches. So I don't know if somebody hit it and then tried to climb up it and do something. I do know there was a fellow up there now, I've got to spend a couple hours out of my day to actually straighten this ladder up and go and see what kind of damage is up there on the top. Because those of you know, the tops of these vans, if you're not on one of those rib supports, it, the, the top will cave in easily. And I see a, a handprint there, one on the side there. So I'm not sure what I'm in for. So I'm gonna try to straighten the ladder up before I go up there and uh, see what damage it is. But uh, yeah, so that's the kind of stuff you have to put up with. We had tons of fun, so I'm, I'm glad we actually went. And uh, we stayed uh, a night and found a good boondocking spot uh, right on the, the uh, sound side of the ocean. We like to go out and have fun and go to different places. And uh, it just seems like this ladder attracts everybody and everybody wants to climb up this ladder. I gotta be honest with you, when you put a ladder on your van, you open yourself up to a whole lot of trouble. And I'm not even sure it's actually worth it. So I may even take this ladder off. Today I'm gonna tell you about some updates I've made to the van, some items that I now keep in the van that have proven to be worth their weight in gold. And I'll also show you some configurations of the van because when I designed the back of this van, I designed it to be a modular garage space. Well, we have since added a third seat to the van, right? And so now we can travel with three people. So it's important for us to be able to sleep three people now and also carry at least three bikes for those three people and then also some additional cargo. So we had to come up with a way to actually configure the space. And I thought about buying an external uh, hitch mount bicycle rack, but you know, you're probably into it $1,500 by the time you buy a swing away and then actually buy a nice sturdy rack that would hold the weight of those bicycles and perhaps that motorcycle. I've already experienced bad stuff with just having a ladder on the van. I definitely don't want to have to deal with having bicycles on the back that are kind of unprotected. So let me just turn the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. So this is normally our two person sleeper up here. So um, we have plenty of pull out tray space to store bikes at the bottom. You usually have two bikes here, one bike and electric motorcycle on this side. And uh, that's good for two person trip. But uh, now that we've added this third seat to our van, I'll show you this. This is why we call it the Krugo. If you haven't seen this video, go back in our playlist. We added this third seat. And so that means we need to be able to store three bikes. We need to be able to sleep at least two people up in the top. And then I've built these units at the bottom that actually covers one of the, the trays. So we have this eggshell and it just folds over and we have two layers deep and we just roll that out. It's the perfect width folded. And we just roll it out and make a bed down at the bottom. You can just kind of remove these. I'm going to cover it with the speaker fabric as well. I just made them smaller so they're easily removed and uh, you still have access to your storage area underneath. Being able to utilize this space as a sleeper and two sleeping up top and we have three seats in the van. Now we kind of have a perfect three 
by three van camper that we can go on trips together and actually utilize. It took a little bit of foresight when I was building out the van to make sure that this space down here was configurable, um, spe specifically the spacing of the trays inside the van and the actual width of the trays. I left just enough to get a two by six in between each one with a little bit more room over here because of how wide handlebars are on today's modern mountain bike. So you got to kind of think about that a little bit and uh, it's worked out well here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this platform back in. I'll show you what we did on the, on the bike tray side and how we were able to get three bikes in there and how that is actually configurable if we want to move some back over to this side. We've got a modern kind of trail slash enduro bike, modern XC bike, and also a modern dirt jumper bike. So we've got two different tire sizes, three different frame sizes. I'm just gonna slide this out with all of my uh, bike keepers here from the front fork keepers. Um, these are the Rocky mounts. They can hold multiple axle sizes with some inserts into them. So I, I, I really like those, but they are kind of on the expensive side. But I mount these to the plywood bottom and use a piece of thin aluminum to help strengthen it, the tray from side to side. Uh, and so I use these threaded inserts uh, in the bottom of the wood. And so these are just bolts that I can remove. So I can take these out and I've got different configurations. You can see some holes back there. And I also have some holes in the other tray here, right here and here. And also you'll notice that the way I installed the third bike is actually, I have another set back there uh, in the back of the tray kind of offset from the bottom so that the forks kind of lean up and that gives me more clearance for the handlebars over the tires so uh, i've got a mount back there with the same threaded insert so i can actually remove that and put it anywhere else or i can remove these and put it anywhere else depending on the configuration of bike the way we were able to get three bikes on here is actually turn the middle bike uh, facing backwards and then i also raised the front of the fork up a little bit off so you can see back there I've got a little, it's almost a little two by two and then a piece of a half inch plywood on top. So it's higher than the bottom of the tray. You can see the, uh, the mount there. And uh, that gives me clearance enough and clearance enough from the cranks on the bike over there, inter interfering with the cranks on this bike and interfering with the cranks on the dirt jumper. And it's a tight fit, but it fits and I've got some cloth crammed in between to protect both frames. One thing is I had to take the pedal off here uh, in order to give enough space there to uh, not roll over into a pedal while you're sleeping during the middle of the night. And then also on the middle bike, we removed both pedals on both sides. So there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of uh, configuration you have to do to the bikes once you get them out of the trays, but this allows us to keep the bikes inside and be able to sleep three people. I keep one tire up in the net up here. So hanging from the net. And one tire is actually bound to the side of the tray over here to the dirt jumper. And then another tire actually goes in the front here. So this tire, I keep it on the end here. And uh, I just use this, uh, these set of bungees like that and that, that keeps the tire from flopping around and that gets me three bikes and three tires all in this one tray which makes it nice because it opens up all this space so it's an interesting configuration and we can easily go back to utilizing both trays for bikes or motorcycles just basically remove that bike and uh, put it in this tray all right so the other thing we picked up was a set of leveling ramps and uh, we needed those because more and more so we're parking and boondocking in spots that are not level whatsoever and so we like we try to get it we try to get the van as close as possible level from side to side and front to back uh, but it don't always work out but i keep these stowed under the the third seat and they just push out the back here and uh, they're made out of this uh, durable plastic here and you can see, you can, you can actually drive right over top of them too. So even if you put them in front of the van, you can literally just drive away if you're at a campsite and you just wanna drive over them. Typically I try to put them behind the wheels and then back onto them and, and, and get it level. So these are called the Camco 
tri-leveler and they have three different heights and they're made out of just durable plastic so I only have two of them but typically between these three heights and the two dispersed between the four tires I can get the van really really super level so you know they are a bit pricey for what they are and before I was just using rocks and stones or whatever I found and it, it kind of became quite a bit of a chore to get the right height to stack them so I think these are well worth the investment and we keep them under this third seat here and you know this third seat's removable just like any passenger van so a lot of times what we do is we'll take this third seat and we'll lean it up and that still gives us access to this uh, area here if we want to dine if we want to just spend some time inside the van it's pretty easy to uh, just unlatch the back it's just these two loops here pull up on it and they unclip from the back latches and then you still have the front latches are still they're still up under latches and so the seat won't go anywhere and you can just lean it forward and if we push this the front seat up even more you can lean it almost to the dash and it is almost 100 percent out of the way so that's what it looks like when we have it spun through the side there so you can see you got additional seating so it is not always in the way i mean it's kind of it's kind of a game of tetris to actually um, get all of your your luggage and your, your camping supplies in the van anyhow so it's pretty easy just to, sw to swivel this thing out of the tracks and just use it as a regular seat sitting on the bottom of the van like that all right so now i'm going to show you something that i found is invaluable and it's so cheap i used to camp growing up and we always had the little coleman lanterns that had the little sacks on them they run off of propane and when you're camping in the woods you're tent camping whatever it may be you need a source of light and i typically use a combination of headlamps and uh, some other source of lamp uh, source of light like a uh, lantern so i picked this up off of amazon and it's probably one of the neatest things i have now uh, and it, what it is it's just a lithium battery powered lantern so the handle folds out and it's actually a flashlight and so you turn this on here and you've got a an led flashlight with a handle and then you sit it down on its base here and uh, hit the switch again and you've got a lantern light two different brightnesses and then also when you're camping at night and you don't want your eyes to freak out with all the bright light a red light is really good and i use this when we're sitting around cooking or if we're around a campfire and we're just talking the, the flies and the mosquitoes and the noceums are not as attracted to this red light as well so we use that a lot and then there's like this kind of red beacon it comes with a little a loop and a little carabiner on top it's just made out of some plastic it does have a rubber ring around the base here so when you sit it down it protects the flashlight area and uh, with this little carabiner here you can hang this thing anywhere i don't have a built-in light source in the garage of the van all my lights are built uh, either toward the front or over the bed here but what i do have are these 12 volt outlets on each side here and I can put anything I want to in there. And the good thing is, is this charges and it lasts about six hours and I can just go up here and hang this anywhere in the van and turn it on. And I've got a good light source for the garage of my van. And then I can take this to the fire pit, the campsite. I can walk around and use it as a flashlight if I'm looking for something deep back in the garage there. And, uh, and it's pretty bright light. It's like a 4K type light so it is a true kind of a white light versus the uh, the neutral uh, yellow light the one thing i don't like about it is you have to cycle through so you can't just go directly to lantern or flashlight uh, you have to cycle through each one to get to the next one uh, it's kind of a problem if you're in a campsite and you don't want to be uh, you don't want to turn a bright light on and just want to get to the red you've got to cycle through it to get to the red but it is what it is but this thing has proven invaluable so far it's really cool we had it set up at the beach um, we had our uh, our tent set up over the picnic table and we did had this hanging right from the center of the tent and it provided more than enough light uh, for us to see how to eat see how to cook see how to uh, you know play some cards do whatever i'll leave a link in the description to this it charges by usb and i just keep the cable along with it that way i can always find it and when I use it for the night, I just come over and plug it into my USB port here and charge it up. And once it's charged, I just, uh, I just kind of store it in one of the pockets in the door of the van here. Uh, and it stores nicely. It is 
it is small. It's probably about three inches across. It also has a built-in USB port too. So it has a, a port where you can plug something else in, like you could charge your phone off of this battery that's in that's part of this lantern as well you know the batteries are not that big it'll run for about five maybe six hours um on a full charge and i think it takes about five or six hours to actually charge it back up though but it's pretty convenient because i just leave it back here and i plug it in when i need to recharge it and just could hang it anywhere so that's kind of an update on the van and some of the things that i've put inside the van since you've seen it last um hope you enjoyed the content if you did give me a thumbs up if you didn't hey give me a thumbs down too that's okay. So we'll wrap this video up here until next time. You know what to do. Skill up and ride, band up and go.